So hey guys, I know how daunting headshots can be. The thought of getting close to 100 of them can be very off-putting, but don't worry, we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna show you how to get them really easily. As you can see here, I'm almost at the end of my headshot challenge. As I'll show you guys, in the gameplay you're seeing, I've got over 20 headshots. So like I say, I'm gonna show you how easy it can be. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. All right, so we're gonna be talking about the game modes and the maps to go for, the in-game tips, which are very helpful, and then also the best class setup and just some other general tips. I'm gonna have timestamps in the description and if you find it useful, feel free to leave a like, it really helps me out. And also make sure you're subscribed with post notifications turned on so you don't miss any of my other Modern Warfare videos. All right then, let's get started. So a headshot, just for anyone that doesn't know, is obviously when you kill someone by shooting them in the head. You need headshots for mission challenges a bit, but also mainly camo challenges i'm sure that's what most of you guys will be here for these will come under the woodland camos so there's a nine different variants of camos you need and the top one will get you all your headshot challenges done it's the second challenge needed and you'll need to get the headshots for assault rifles you'll need 125 headshots smgs you'll need 100 headshots lmgs you'll need 75 headshots marksman rifles you're going to need 60 headshots and pistols you're going to need 50 headshots all right so what kind of game modes should you be playing well my favorite game mode without a doubt is realism mode and I know that sounds very weird, but I'll explain why I like it. So in this game mode, you've got the minimap and the compass and the kill feed removed. So it's very sort of realistic, very basic. There's not really much HUD. But the main reason why I like it is because you've still got 100 health, so normal health, but a headshot with any gun is one shot to the head. So they've still got normal health. It will normally take still a few bullets to kill people if you shoot them in the sort of the legs or the chest. But if you shoot them in the head, bam, one shot, they're dead. And that is why I like it so much. That's definitely my number one choice. If you guys don't like that, I'd also suggest free for all. There's lots more enemies. You're much closer to them all. So you can get closer, aim to the head easier. And there's also more opportunities to get kills. So I definitely love that. In terms of the maps, you're going to be wanting those smaller maps with lots of close quarter combat engagement high flow areas is the best kind of map so you know parts of sort of things like piccadilly hackney yard those kind of maps all right so let's talk about some really useful tips so first thing i'm going to say is if you're not sure about getting headshots you feel a bit shaky with getting them definitely start off by going into a private match practice with bots especially when you're getting used to a new weapon you haven't used before with a new class jump into private match quickly have a quick game with bots just kind of warm up a bit get used to getting headshots once you feel like you've got quite a few and you're you know, happy with it, then go into multiplayer and start getting them. Another important thing is also to kind of keep a slower playstyle. Now, normally, faster playstyles are good for getting headshots, and definitely if you can, it's good for doing so. But in this game, it definitely favours a slower playstyle. So kind of keep it slower if you can. Take a bit slower. Don't just rush and run and gun. But when you can, obviously, sort of get in there, get your headshots. It's all about sort of playing it by ear and seeing how the pace of the game is going and that kind of thing. You also want to be keeping an eye on the minimap and compass. This is only if you're in free for all, obviously, because obviously realism doesn't have this. But if you are playing free for all, keep your eye on the minimap and compass. It's easy to find where the enemies are and then you can go towards them, get more kills and get more headshots, obviously. Uh, in terms of settings, it's also good to have a look at the sensitivity speed and ADS speed, that kind of thing. The reason for this is because some players find that by slowing the sensitivity down, it makes it easier to get headshots. And some people find that if you kind of up it a bit, uh, it's easier as well. This all depends on your playstyle, so give it a try, play around a bit a bit, see what you like best. But the reason why this is good is because the higher the sensitivity, the easier it is to get to where you want to be. So if, if you're turned around and there's an enemy behind you, it's going to be quicker to aim at them and get to their head with a higher sensitivity. The trouble is if you make it too high, then it's easy to overshoot and then it makes it more difficult to actually lock on and snap onto the enemy's head. So you want to make it high enough that you know, you're able to move around easily depending on where the enemy is, but not too high that it's too difficult to sort of snap onto their head. So keep that in mind, but definitely play around with the sensitivity until you get it right for you. You also want to be using flashbangs or stun grenades to kind of stun the enemies. It either will blind them or slow their movements. It makes it really difficult for them to actually adjust and shoot you. And obviously while they're kind of struggling with this, you can literally come up to them, bam, aim in the head, easy headshot. And like I say, you actually want to be properly aiming for the head. Okay, so sometimes people don't think about this, but it's really important to actually aim for the head instead of just sort of as a reflex, snapping onto them, killing them. You actually want to think about aiming for their head the whole time. And you'll know when you've got headshot, especially in realism mode, sometimes it could be a bit difficult to tell, did it count, did it not? Because you'll hear a certain headshot sound effect. I'll play it for you guys. You can see what I mean. Reloading. Reloading. 
So that's what headshot sound effect is like. Listen out for that and you'll know you're getting headshots. Okay, so next thing, when you're going around corners or sort of up or down stairs, you really want to anticipate enemies being there. Sometimes they won't be, but it's important to do so just in case they are. That way you're more on your game. You're more likely to kill them because you're expecting them, but they're not expecting you. So you want to be keeping your aim, the crosshairs, at head level wherever you're going. So if you're standing up, you're going around the corner, make sure you're keeping it at eye level, basically at head level, so that if there was an enemy there, you can quickly snap onto them very easily and kill them by aiming at their head. So just always sort of anticipate the enemies because it makes it easier to get headshots. Next, you want to also check spawns if you can. It can sometimes be useful to flank. Obviously, it makes it easier to get headshots on enemies, but also you'll sometimes go into spawns and there might be some inactive players. This is really good because it's basically free headshots. So definitely keep an eye out for that. So if you're not finding any enemies, it's definitely worth having a look over at the spawns. Next up, Windows and boxes can be very good. What I mean by this is that, let's say an enemy is standing behind a box or a piece of cover. This cuts off the lower part of their body so it's easier to sort of see their head because they've only got the head and maybe part of the chest. So it's easier to sort of aim up and get the headshot because it kind of cuts off the body, makes a good aim. Um, and the same for window ledges. So if someone's in a window, obviously it cuts off part of their body. That's very useful as well. The other thing though is that if enemies are in windows or say behind cover or something, they're often looking forwards, seeing if there's any enemies. They're completely vulnerable from behind. So if you can see this, use this to your advantage, kind of get round to them and sort of take them out from behind by shooting them in the head. Most of the time they won't even know you're there. And if you're very sneaky, it's very easy to get headshots this way. So if you if you see any opportunities like that or you suspect it, definitely use that to your advantage. Sort of finally for the main tips, I'd say also use tracker as well to find the enemies. This is a perk and I'll talk about that later on in the video in the best class setup, but definitely you want to use this so you can sneak up behind the enemies, get headshots on them really easily. It's very useful. Use it when you can and uh, you'll definitely be very grateful. Okay, so now let's move on to the kind of class setup. So like I said, you need headshots for assault rifles, submachine guns, light machine guns, marksman rifles, and also pistols as well. So I've done a sort of an example class for each of them. What I would say is that most of the class other than the weapon and the attachments itself is the same. So I'll go through that first and then we'll talk about in each individual weapon and their attachments. So for the perks, I generally recommend EOD for perk one. The reason for this is because it reduces the non-kill streak damage you take. So for example, explosives, that kind of fires, that kind of thing. Um, you can also hack claymores and proximity mines, C4, trophy systems, that kind of thing. It's very just good for dying less from explosions. Perk two, I quite like using hardline. The reason for this is because, especially if you're in realism mode, it's not very easy to see where the enemies are because you've got no minimap, you've got no compass. So if you use hardline, it takes one less kill to get your kill streaks. And we'll talk about kill streaks later on. You can equip things like UAV, it makes it easier to find the enemies and therefore it's easier to get kills. Now for perk three, I like using tracker, like I said, and that's just so that you get that footprint trail behind them. Wherever they go, they leave a footprint trail and you also see markers at enemy death locations. So it just makes it easier to sort of find where enemies are, sneak up behind them and again, get headshots on them. A lot of the time they won't anticipate that. So it just makes it easier for you to get the headshots. Shots. In terms of equipment, the lethal doesn't matter too much. I just put on a frag grenade. It doesn't really matter. Try and stay away from using them. They don't help you with headshots at all. What I would say for the tactical is either use a stun grenade, which is good because you can stun enemies. Like I say, it's easier to get headshots. You can also use a flashbang as well, but I like stun grenades. Or alternatively, you can use a snapshot grenade. These are good because if you throw one, it will show enemies through the walls. It will also show it on minimaps as well. So if you've got the UAV up or if you're in free for all or something like that, obviously you won't see it on the minimap if you're in realism but it's still good because you can see the enemies through walls. So if you think there's an enemy there, but you don't know where exactly, throw this bad boy in, it will show through the walls, it will mark them in red, and then you can try and find them and get headshot on them because they won't know you're there, but you know they're there. So it just makes it easier for you. So it's up to you whether to go for that or a stun grenade. In terms of field upgrades, Dead Silence is my go-to. It's my favorite because it means you've got quieter footsteps. And again, it's easier to sneak up on enemies. You can go and flank enemies. You can go around the side of the map, get into spawns, that kind of thing. It's really good for getting headshots. Definitely be stealthy when you can and do that by using Dead Silence. You can also use the ammunitions box. It basically replenishes your ammo and your equipment. But like I said, I prefer Dead Silence. For the kill streaks, stay away from lethal ones. Only use non-lethal ones. So things like the personal radar and UAV. So the personal radar, if you've got hardline, you get it at two kills. It's easy. It will help show up enemies more easily. And then, like I say, once you get enough kills for the UAV, which will be one kill cheaper if you're using hardline, then again, you can find where enemies are on the minimap. It makes it much easier. You've got the advantage. It makes it really good for the mode. So for the secondary, I just like using the rocket launcher. The reason for this is because if you're in realism mode, if an enemy's got UAV, 
they've got a big advantage over you and so what you want to do is use the rocket launcher and try and take it out other than that i wouldn't go near the secondary because it doesn't help you get headshots for your weapon a few example class setups here so for the assault rifle i've gone for the reflex sight these are very good it's easier to see where you're aiming makes it good for getting headshots i've gone for the monocle reflex sight here but you can go for anyone you want for the stock i've gone for the no stock option and this is good because it gives you increased movement speed and aim down sight speed i've then also gone for the rubberized grip tape this is under the rear grip tab and this is good because again it helps control the recoil i've also added 50 round mag so it increases the ammo capacity gives you more bullets because obviously not all of them will be on target when you're aiming so obviously it means you'll need to reload less which is good and then finally under barrel which just gives you a range of foregrip which means you can control your recoil and there's more aiming stability for the smg i'd suggest going for the 407 millimeter extended barrel this gives you increased damage range smgs obviously have a less damage range than other weapons so using this extended barrel is really good like i said it gives you bigger damage range bigger bullet velocity and also recoil control it's really good i'd use an optic again like a reflex sight or alternatively i quite like using the integral hybrid sight as well so this has got a zoomed in optic and then you can swap it for a zoomed out one depending on what scenario you're in how far away you are from the enemy that kind of thing i'd also use stock so in particular i'd use the forge tac cqb comb and this gives you an increased ads speed which is again really good obviously i'd use a 32 round mag and i'd also use the ranger foregrip in the under barrel category and this obviously gives you recoil control and some aiming stability again obviously like i say the attachments sort of vary a lot depending on the weapons but for the lmgs i like using the integral hybrid again i also like using no stock and this is because it gives you an increased movement speed and ads speed i like using a perk this time slide of hand you reload faster obviously it's very slow for reloading with light machine guns so you don't want to be caught off guard with that so use sleight of hand to reload faster i then also use the stipled grip tape on the rear grip and this helps to increase your ads speed and sprint to fire speed so finally i'd also use the snatch grip for the under barrel and this helps with recoil control and ads speed for the marksman rifle the attachments i like using are a forged tack precision 20 inch for the barrel this increases the damage range the bullet velocity and the recoil control for the optic i like going for the monocle reflex sights for the stock I like using the FFS Raider sh Chassis Elite and this is because it gives you an increased ADS speed, aim walking movement speed and a sprint to fire speed. They, those will go up. I like using the 15 round mags just so it gives you a bit more ammo and then for the under barrel I use the Ranger foregrip again which helps with recoil control and aiming stability. So finally for the pistols if you're going for headshots with these I generally like using the Vanguard Elite for the barrel this increases the damage range again it's much smaller with the pistols it also helps with bullet velocity and recoil control for the optic i like using the solo zero optics mini reflex and then i like using the stipled grip for the rear grip and this helps with ads speed and sprint to fire speed i then also use slightly bigger mags so 17 round mags and then finally for trigger action i use the match grade trigger this increases the fire rate and the aiming stability so it basically means you can fire faster you've got a larger damage range more recoil control quicker ADS ADS speed and more bullets so it's definitely very helpful for getting headshots with a pistol now i hope you found this all useful these are all the different class setups if you found this useful make sure to leave a like it really helps me out and like i say subscribe for all the latest call of duty and modern warfare videos if you've got any tips to add that i haven't thought of be sure to leave them down below in the comment section and then also if there's any challenge guys you want me to cover feel free to let me know and i'll be happy to give it a go thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all on the next video